from the Lord, and I know that I've got a word from God today. And if you're listening to my radio or watching on television, the Lord just began to deal with me. And, and So what we've got to do during this fast, we've got to claim that reward. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers, and today's program is, is going to be great, and I know God's going to bless you. But I want to share something just for a moment. By the end of September, we will have established a Christian television station in the Holy Land. It will be able to broadcast from Bethlehem all into Jerusalem with its repeater stations. It will cover down into uh, Tel Aviv, it'll get over into Jordan to the capital city of Jordan, Amman. It'll go down in the Jordan Valley. That includes the Sea of Galilee, the Tiberias, Nazareth. It'll even get into Syria. And there are many settlements there in Syria. Some are Israeli, some are Druze, some are Syrians. It'll go over into Lebanon. It'll cover the Holy Land with the gospel. And I want to thank so many of you that are helping to make this possible. And I'm asking as many as can to give a gift today of $126. I'll be sharing more about that, but you say, why $126? Well, the reason is because, because 126 is the numerical number for the Hebrew name Jehovah Adonai. You know, if you'll see some of the Jewish homes, they'll, they'll have them for sale for 400 and, and, some, and then 126. And a lot of times you'll see this, especially if Jewish people are selling something. And they call, they call it their lucky number. But actually, it's the number of Jehovah Adonai. And for $126, you can help make this possible. And I have a gift I'm going to send to you. It's the New Testament on video. That's right, on video. It took almost 10 years for this to produce. A friend of mine did this, and it's something that is a great blessing. The fact is, I want to show you what this is all about. L look at this video just for a moment. One day, Zechariah's group of priests were on duty, and he was serving God as a priest. According to the custom of the priests, he had been chosen to go into the Lord's temple that day and to burn incense while the people stood outside praying. All at once, an angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah at the right side of the altar. Zechariah was confused. Well, I hope uh, you call us and something that would be a great blessing to you. But right now, I'm going to take you into our service. by a cedar tree and the fact is in some translations it doesn't really say cedar tree it calls it um, an erez tree e-r-e-z which means a tree that has cones on it a conifer tree and in 2003 that tree was replaced with this type of tree and they called it the tree of hope it was a spruce tree they replaced it right around Christmas time and then they decorated it as a Christmas tree, fulfilling the very prophecy that was recorded 2,500 years before. Now, in other words, if America doesn't repent, the word of the Lord says America is going to lose its financial place in the world. The dollar is going to have major issues and will not be the leading currency uh, in the future. The judgment, if Israel and America don't repent, was a military and had economic consequences. Now, 
According to this prophecy in Isaiah, if after the first calamity and warning, people didn't turn back to God, then the nation is, is going to, it rises in defiance. It's going to trigger a second and more powerful calamity. Are you listening to me today? Amen. Well, in Leviticus chapter 25 is one of the great chapters in the Bible. And it's a chapter that talks about the year of Jubilee. And there was a, a, a week of years, 49 years, and on the 50th year, there was to be this year of Jubilee. And what it was, it was a cancellation of properties that had been sold so you'd get your properties back. If you sold a piece of property, it wasn't for, for you know, forever. At the year of Jubilee, all the land would be restored. So if that land was sold uh, and there's 40 years into the next Jubilee, it's, it has a higher value than if you sold it and there's just 10 years left into the year of Jubilee. But in addition, say in addition, there was a seven-year release. After every seven years, there was to be a, a total release or year of rest. It was called the uh, Shemittal. Say Shemittal. That's that Hebrew word for every seven years, there was a year of rest. You, you couldn't plant. Uh, you couldn't harvest the fruit. You couldn't prune the trees. The fact is when the Romans came to power on that year of Shemittal, they would lower the taxes because they knew that the people would not be working that year, and yet God would, God would take care of them. And so there was the year of Shemittal, according to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 3. It was a release of debt. And, uh, and so seven years after 9-11, seven years after 9-11, the American economy collapsed. And in the days after 9-11, the Federal Reserve uh, slashed the base interest rates in an attempt to defy the consequences of this attack. Uh, that action put us on a path leading to the total collapse of our economy seven years later. When I say seven years later, it took place on the exact day, the 29th of the Hebrew calendar of uh, Elu, which was the seventh year to the date from, from the 9-11. And so after 9-11, we had the second worst drop in the stock market in 30 years, the day after 9-11. Then seven years later, we had the worst drop in the history of the stock market. It's very interesting. It took place... At, uh, the anniversary of the seven-year rest. It lost 7% of the value. It lost $700 billion. It dropped 777 points. There's a lot of sevens in there, isn't there? I mean, do you think that might even be prophetic? It might be something spiritual. Lost $700 billion, seven years to the day. It lost 7% and dropped 777 points. And it wiped out seven years of profits. Now, isn't this an encouraging sermon? Aren't you encouraged? And your faith is at an all-time high here. But I want to share with you the days in which we live. God has chosen us to be alive at this time. Wouldn't it be nicer to preach at a different time when everything good was happening? But we're living in the hour that God has says, if this nation does not repent, America is going to become a third world country. And guess who the Christians are put on guard to fight and to stand in the gap? It's you and me. We have a responsibility that my dad didn't have, that the generations past didn't have. Now, we've got to repent. True repentance. What, what is true repentance? You, you know, I can come here and I, I could commit some terrible sin. 
You can commit some sin and you come here and you ask God to forgive you. Lord, forgive me. May your blood cover me from these sins. God, you said you'd cast my sins into the sea of forgetfulness, blah, 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 blah. And then get up. You're forgiven. You're going, you're, you're all right now. And you go out and do the same thing again. You have asked forgiveness, but you haven't turned and gone the opposite direction. And so here you can be in fornication. You can be in, in uh, pornography. You can be involved in things that are dishonest. You can have habits in your life and you come to a service and you feel, get feeling guilty and you come up here and you ask forgiveness and you start feeling better. But after a couple of days, you get right back into it and it's called a, a uh, uh, David wrote and he says, uh, protect me from, from the type of sin that, that you plan to go back into. It's a, a you're presuming that God is going to forgive you. It's the worst type of sin. I'm going to head and, 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 and commit adultery. I'm going to head and, and do this uh, terrible thing because I know I'll pray and God will forgive me. It's a, a sin of presuming that God will forgive you and so it's all right to go ahead and commit the sin. Is that repentance? We're talking about if you've been involved in pornography, if you've been involved in things in your life, to totally turn and go the opposite way. If you got girls, if you got a boyfriend, and you've been sleeping with that boyfriend, and you get feeling guilty about it, so you pray and ask God to forgive forgiveness, and you think everything's all right, but you know you can't date that boyfriend. Once you cross the line, you cross the line. And every time you get with him, it's not going to end with a handshake and with a, a peck on the, on the cheek. You're going to get right back into that situation. You either have to marry that guy or break that relationship off. Come on, don't shout me down because I'm, I'm preaching so good today. Hallelujah. It's like, it's like one lady. She said, Brother Bob, I enjoyed that. I would have shouted all over this church, but I'm so heavy. I, I don't think I could have made it around the church. Repentance. And now, now let me share something. If, if this country is under judgment and you have stood in the gap and you're praying for your family, do you believe that God is going to protect you? He will protect you. There will be a difference between those who have repented and walk in righteousness and those who don't walk in righteousness. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 15 and said, look, look to the stars of the sky. You, that's how your family is going to be. You think stars are concerned about the laws on planet Earth? Heavens, no. They're ruled by a stronger law. They, they, they operate in a completely different realm. God says, that's the way your seed will be. They can operate by faith in the laws of God. And they'll rise higher and I'll protect them and I'll make them the head and not the tail and above only and not beneath. What about Gideon? Gideon had a fleece and he put that fleece out. And the Bible says that that fleece was wet and all around it was dry. In other words, if you'll serve me, Gideon, I don't care what it's like all around you. They can be lacking water. They can be lacking provision. But you're going to be high and dry with the blessing of the dew of heaven. What, what, what about the story of Nineveh? Nineveh, they were headed for judgment, but they repented. The Bible says they went on a fast and they repented. And for the next 40 years, God blessed the nation of Nineveh. It was the next generation that went through the destruction. In the times of Jesus, Jesus prophesied and he prophesied over Jerusalem. And he said, the day will come when these hills will be surrounded. And when, it, when that happens, you're to flee to the mountains. Because death and destruction will come to Jerusalem. Well, in 70 AD, the Roman legions surround Jerusalem. And they uh, looked like they were going to destroy them. How can you flee to the mountains if the Romans have surrounded the city? How can you get out of the city? But you know what happened? The Roman legions were called back 
to Caesarea, the, the, the port city. They went back there and then they got news. All right, go ahead and, and retake Jerusalem. So then they went back and marched on Jerusalem. But during that time when they, when they stepped away from Jerusalem, every Christian, say every Christian, every. they got out of Jerusalem. The Jews said, the Jews said, listen, you know, it's okay. Everything's fine. We've, we've run them off. They're not coming back. No, Jesus spoke those words. And every Christian left Jerusalem. But you know, the Romans came back, surrounded the city. They took Jerusalem and they slaughtered one million Jews in the city of Jerusalem. But not one Christian died. Not one Christian was taken. You know why? They had followed the prophecy of Christ. Now, what I'm, I'm talking about is this. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Humble means to fast. If you'll fast and pray and turn from your wicked ways and seek my face, then you'll hear from heaven and I will heal your land. The word land in the Hebrew means dirt. Our dirt is sick and polluted. You know, it's an amazing thing. Read, read the book of Hosea chapter 3. It talks about when there's murder, when there is, is adultery, when there's lying, when there's robbing, that the land becomes polluted. It becomes polluted. The, the earth cried out with the blood, innocent blood of Abel. Avenge me. Avenge me of, my sin, of the sins that have happened to me. The blood of 30 million aborted babies are crying out from the land, avenge my blood. And this land, if it's to prosper, it has to be healed. You know, the, the fact is, in Hosea, it talks about even the, the islands of the sea, that the fish will die off, and you can't even catch any fish because of the sins. And so God says, if my people who are called by my name will fast and pray, I'm going to heal their land. You know, God gave me a promise, and it was an amazing thing. I was praying, and I took the Bible, and I just opened it like that. I said, you know, have you ever done that? Just open it, up and it felt, I don't even like to tell people that because I don't want them to do that. But uh, it fell open, and it just fell open to this scripture. The fact is, it fell open. Then I was trying to tell somebody, and I was trying to find it, and I couldn't even, I couldn't even find the scripture. And, uh, but it just fell open to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23. And I want to share this because this is, this is a promise for us. In Jeremiah 9, 23, it says, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, nor the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let them that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, and I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. We can't get proud because we got a little bit of money. Are you living in a nice neighborhood? Are you driving a big car? Are you got some money in the bank? That could all disappear just like that. Now, I want you to listen real closely. We're living in a time when all the world is messed up. The fact is, you know, you used to go into, used to go into France and have those French francs and you'd go over to Germany and have the German marks. It's not that way anymore. You have the euro. The euro, they've done away with a lot of that currency. You have the euro. And so um, they're saying in the next five to ten years, there's probably going to be about five to seven currencies. They're doing away with currencies. You go down to Panama, they don't have Pan American money. They use the dollar. That's their currency, the U.S. dollar. And, and, and numerous nations use that. Well, the economy is going to get so bad that they're going to do away with all of the currencies and then come up with one currency, one world currency. And then it's going to be in such a mess that they're going to have to come up with an idea how to heal all of this. And there's only going to be one supernatural way to make this work. And it's found in the Bible in Leviticus chapter 25. And it's a debt cancellation. It's a year of Jubilee. And so... When you start hearing people 
talk about a worldwide debt cancellation and we're going to do away with currency. What we're going to do is go to a worldwide credit card system. And, and how we're going to do with this credit card is we're going to put it in a chip in your finger, in your thumb, or on your forehead so it can be scanned. Suddenly, the mark of the beast, 666, is not a tattoo of a six. It's something you can understand. It's a credit card system. It's a money system. And when they start talking this... Out of that door, out of that G20 group, out of that group that starts talking about a, a, a debt cancellation, out of that's going to walk the Antichrist. And we're living in that generation, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be alive if the Lord doesn't come back, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen to our young people. And we have to be closer to God now than we've ever been before. Now, I was preaching this last last service, and I was totally unprepared for what happened. A fellow got up, and he, he had a word from the Lord. He prophesied. Another lady got up, and she said, I have a word from God for this congregation. Our church, God's called us to pray and to begin to intercede, and we have to intercede against this. Another man got up. He said, uh, this week, I had a vision from the Lord. I never even told my wife. And in that vision, a man came to this church, got on the platform, and he preached from Isaiah 9, 10, and he preached the same words you preached, and you got up and preached it this morning. I know this is a word from the Lord. Another lady got up. She said, I am the great, great, great granddaughter of a slave. And she said, I've come to this church, and where it's the only church I've ever been in, where there's blacks and whites and worshiping God, my brothers and sisters are in this church and racism is not a part of this church. But our president has led us down the wrong way. He's, he has sinned against America through abortion and through uh, homosexual marriages and he's repented. And she, if I got up and started saying that, I'd have people throw bricks at me. But she got up and she shared that. We're living in a time when we have to understand that our leaders can lead us in the wrong direction. I'm not going to call our president by his last name, Obama. He's President Obama. He's our president. I prayed for our president. But our president has done wrong to this country by endorsing homosexual marriages. It's a sin. It's, it's, this isn't a political situation. It's a, it's a spiritual situation. We need to pray for our president. We need to lift him up and ask God for repentance in our nation. Now today, I want everybody to stand. I want everyone standing. If you're here and you have any kind of anointing as an intercessor for prayer, I want you to come right down here to the front. And I want you to put your feet just as close to this altar as you can. You say, Pastor, I've, there's, there's an anointing on me as an intercessor. I want you to come. And as you're coming, I want everyone to pray this prayer with me out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you not only to forgive me of my sins, but I repent from, for unrighteousness. And I repent for the sins of our family. Now, there are sins in your family. There are sins that your children have committed. That you're, It may be alcoholism. It may be uh, adultery. It may be all type of perversion. That doesn't even mean that you've done it. But I want us to repent for the sins of our family. Everyone here. And you know, when you begin to repent like this, it's not a real out loud prayer. If you notice, people start repenting. He gets a real quiet prayer. It's a whispering prayer because they don't want other people to know. But I want us to repent right now for the sins that are in our own families. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we come. And we come in repentance, Lord Jesus. God, we come and we ask God that you would forgive our families. The, uh, the sins of 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 dishonesty, of lying, of cheating, the sins, Lord, of abuse, the sins of racism, the sins, oh God, of immorality. Lord, we repent in the name of the Lord. And Father, we ask for revival to begin to come to our own homes and to our children and to our families in the name of the Lord. Begin to speak out loud your families' names. 
Come on, begin to speak their names out to the Lord. Father, we pray for our families. I pray for Justin and Jessica and Rachel. I, I speak the blood of Jesus over them. I speak the blood of Jesus over Margaret. Lord, thank you for Margaret. I pray for Landon and Jacob. I declare your kingdom come and your will to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want us to begin to pray for our nation. I want us to repent of the sins in our nation. Margaret, come up here. I want you to lead us in this prayer. I want us to begin to pray against the sins of abortion and homosexuality and taking Jesus out of our, of our public uh, nation. Lord, today we humble ourselves before you. You know, this would be an opportunity if you can kneel to just kneel before the Lord today. Lord, we have allowed... We, Lord, take responsibility as a people before you, Lord, who have been called to stand for righteousness. Lord, a people who have asked you into our hearts and lives, who have asked you for, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of unrighteousness, and yet have stood and allowed ourselves to be in a place that we have upheld, God, laws upon our land that have brought a curse to us. Today, we repent for the sin of abortion. We repent, Lord, for allowing babies, the born and the unborn, God. We repent for allowing lives to be taken needlessly and carelessly upon our land. Lord, forgive us of this horrific sin. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And you know, the word that God gave me has been in my spirit for some time. If you'd like a copy of that video, just write me or call the number on your screen and we'll be glad to send that to you for any generous gift. And this will help us in our project in, in building a Christian television station right there in the Holy Land. If you'd like to have the New Testament on video, that's right, we'll send it to you. My favorite book is the book of Revelation. It's, it's awesome. Uh, for a gift of $126, we'll rush this to you. I want to show you once again the New Testament on video. His birth will make you very happy. Many people will be glad. Your son will be a great servant of the Lord. He must never drink wine or beer. And the power of the Holy Spirit will be with him from the time he is born. John will lead many people in Israel. Well, wasn't that great? Well, listen, I, I hope I can hear from you. Father, I speak your blessings and miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. continued through fasting and prayer.